our latest Founders for Girl, uh, Skills webinar. Um, today we have both Chris Windley and Chloe Phillips joining us to talk about their careers and um, to hopefully give you some guidance and insight to two of the many, many options are, that are out there. Um, the world of work is very varied and we're hoping that our series of webinars will give you some insights into what is available there, um, but they are by no means the only options available to you. My name is Alison Ray McCune. I am an engagement manager for Founders for Schools and I will be hosting today's session. You are welcome to ask questions at any time because the whole purpose of this is to try and connect um, the young people listening in with people who can share their experiences about their careers. Um, a little bit of housekeeping first, if you're joining us. Um, your audio, video and chat functions have been switched off. This is for safeguarding purposes. However, you can ask questions at any time via the question and answer function. And we'll try to answer as many of those while we're on the call. Uh, we are recording the session and it will be featured on both our platform and our YouTube channel and it should be available hopefully by the end of today but um, within 24 hours it will be there so you can watch it back at any time um, and also share it if you'd like. So firstly Chris and Chloe welcome, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we, we appreciate you joining us to share your stories so i think just to start off with could you just tell me what your actual job title is at the moment and then we'll get the session started so chloe what's your actual job title uh currently i'm a project manager um and i'm doing a project around review and safeguarding excellent which is very relevant to what we're doing right now <laughs> yeah very <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your official job title at the moment? Uh, so, okay, so I've got like uh, a number of different hats. I'm involved in some different things and that. Um, and the easiest way to look at all of them is to go to my LinkedIn profile. Um, but the, so the main things that I'm doing at the minute, I'm the global sales and marketing director for a company called Lou Jam Cyber. Um, and actually Lou Jam Cyber is sort of about uh, safeguarding um, small, medium-sized businesses and people that are working from uh, home remotely from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, okay. And then with another hat on, I'm working with a, an organization that's called Business Resilience International Management, BRIM. Okay, <laughs> right. very long title. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, um, and we are working with the police um, to roll out across the UK um, in each police region a business and cyber resilience centre, um, which is also focused really on protecting SMBs, home workers and remote workers. Okay, so the common theme here today seems to be about keeping people safe which that's that's a nice little connection okay so clearly there were steps that you have taken in your life to get to these jobs so it'd be great for the audience and for us to understand a little bit more behind that so chris could you maybe start first and uh, give us a a brief overview i'm sure <laughs> of how you got from school to where you are today what, yeah what okay well on, obviously obviously because i'm old it's a long story right <laughs> but uh, yeah so well also you get several jobs so <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah but i'll try and you know i'll try and keep it as concise as possible and um you know i've the the benefit if you like of going through it with with you guys last week um which actually made me think a lot uh about it <laughs> um what so i'm just going to say uh that one of the things that there was a question asked uh, last time about um, mentors, right? And so the first thing I want to just say is I've had a lot of people in my life, fortunately, who I actually call angels, right? Um, and those are people that have, you know, helped influence 
what I've done. Um, and, you know, if I've not known what to do and that, they've helped me. Um, there've been quite a few of those in my life. And I, so I was going to highlight those. And also just to say that because a lot of, I think the young people are coming from Aston, is that right in this case? Yes, uh, yeah, that's yeah, who those so, targeted yeah. at. Okay, so I'll, I'll come to this bit, but just to highlight the fact that um, Birmingham and Aston and Erdington actually sort of figure, if you like, in my story. <laughs> um, okay. and, and currently I'm a member of a thing called the Lunar Society, um, which is basically um, a society that, that was started in the Industrial Re Revolution days. And you can look up that, the Lunar Society, if you want. So just coming on to, you know, what is a fairly long story, and I'll try and keep it fairly short. Uh, so basically, um, from, from when I was a baby until about 10, um, my father was in the REF. Um, and my father basically was an aircraft engineer. Um, and so he fixed, he basically fixed jets. Um, and um, warplanes, if you like, right? And so we basically moved around in the UK and in Germany. Um, and I didn't know exactly what my dad did, but I knew that he was messing around with jets, which was all pretty exciting to me. Uh, so obviously I got really quite interested in um, aircraft, if you like, uh, at an early date. Um, unfortunately, um, when I was 10, my, my dad decided to leave us. Um, and so, he left my mom and myself and my sister. Um, and at that, that, at that time we were in um, the rugby, we were living in the rugby area. Um, and uh, we used to have back then, I, you may know Alison, um, a thing called the 11 plus. I think they still have it so, in some places, is that right? Yeah. But, I, uh, I, yeah, I'll be honest, I was raised in the Scottish system, so we never had the 11 pluses, so I'm not quite sure. But I don't know, if, well, Chloe will tell us if she's ever heard of it, I'm sure. But the, <laughs> but the, the, 11, the 11 plus, right, basically what that was, was an exam that you did when you were 11, right, which basically determined whether you went into what was called a secondary modern school or a grammar school, right, which put simply means whether you know, sort of like medium education or higher education type of thing. Yeah. So um, they, anyway, they wanted to just put me in the secondary modern school. But my mum, who was my, my first angel and that, she basically said, my son's cleverer than that. He should go in the grammar school. <laughs> right. So and uh, there's a long story about that. But basically, that's what happened. She got away. Right. And I. So that so first of all, uh, my mum and that actually one of my teachers and that basically they fought for me and said no, Chris should go into grammar school, right? Which meant that um, you know from right from that age, if you like, that I went to rugby grammar school, and then later I went to a school in Wales called Cambridge Grammar School, um, and they were both like top level grammar schools, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so. So I had, I had like really good education then, um, but everything went a bit wrong because uh, I just decided I, to mess around, right? So, um, and in the end, um, and one of the things that was happening was my mum was holding down three jobs um, and I wanted to help her. Um, and so she, uh, again, got me a job um, in the spa supermarket. Uh, and she got me a job with a guy that we call in Wales, we call Jones the Spa. Um, uh, and he was building supermarkets across the uh, across Wales. Right. Um, and I actually just really wanted to get out of school and go and work with him because, okay. you know, he was another, another one of my angels on that, you know. So so and, and that was like so that's what I did. I left school without any qualifications and I just went to work in spa supermarkets um and um and I, like i really had like a load of fun with that and i i learned a lot about you know business and sales and stuff like that uh, basically through philip jones um but then after a while and that again i sort of got a bit uh, bored with it a bit restless and i and it was actually then i came up to work with my dad in birmingham right Mm -hmm. um, and we were living, we were at the time living in Harbin, 
Um, and uh, so I went to work for him. Um, and I also got into sailing boats, right? Uh, sailing dinghies uh, and racing dinghies on the reservoirs in Birmingham. So Edgbaston Reservoir, Brookvale Park, if, you know, the, perhaps the children will have heard of, the, the young people will have heard of those in Birmingham, right? So I got into this racing and I don't consider myself to be really competitive, but I am quite competitive. And um, I basically, once I started that, I, I wanted to learn how to win, right? So I, um, I found a course with Birmingham University, um, which was on aerodynamics and hydrodynamics, right? Which uh, aerodynamics is basically about planes flying. Hydrodynamics is about boats sailing, if you like, put mm -hmm. simply, right? Okay. Um, so I did this course, there was, and, and it was quite technical, and, you know, and uh, I did that course, um, and then, and that helped me to basically sail better, <laughs> right? Because I understood the theory as well as the practice, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so I basically, um, I did that, and then I just decided, for no particular reason, to join the Navy. So I, I went down to the registry office in Birmingham, and I walked into the registry office, and I said, I want to join the Navy. And they said, well, how many qualifications you've got? And I said, none. And they went, oh, okay, well, you'll have to go in as like the lowest rank. So, uh, yeah, okay. So I went in as like the, the lowest rank. But when I got in there, uh, I found very quickly that the Navy was just amazing in terms of the facilities and the support that it would give you, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I had, again, I had people there that were encouraging me. And again, people that were like streaming me and you would do tests in the Navy and they'd say, you're too clever for this, Chris, basically. Right. You've got to go and do this. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah okay. Right. And uh, so this, basically what this was, was, was they sent me off to be what they call a radio mechanic. Right. Which I meant I looked after, I, I repaired radar and sonar and computer systems and stuff like that right um and then again another angel that i had which was my divisional officer and um a, a guy we call a schoolie in the, in the navy they said you know what chris we think you could be an officer in the navy and i went oh right okay well i didn't know you know i never thought i could you know but anyway they <laughs> said oh you you know we think you could be an officer in the navy and i went okay so I, I did the Admiralty interview board and I passed that, which means I was passed for officer, basically. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then they sent me, unbelievably, they sent me on an educational draft uh, to get pure and applied maths and engineering science A-levels. Right. Now, if you'd have spoken to one of my teachers at school, they wouldn't have believed this. Right. Uh, uh, so, so then I, uh, so I did that. And, um, and then again, unbelievably, the Navy paid for me to go to university. They paid me to go to university mm -hmm. um, wh where I did basically a um, computer science and communications, you could call it degree. Okay. Can, right. I, can I ask roughly about what decade this was? Decade. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so basically, um, I went to, I went to university in the early eighties. Okay. Right. So right so, at the point where so, it was so, booming. Yeah. So, so very, you know, late on to go to university, if you like, I was, I was, I was sort of behind everybody, you know, everybody else that was coming through. But of course, actually, I'd had the benefit of being what we call in the Navy in the lower deck, right? Um, you know, so being a rating before I became an officer. So in other ways, I was ahead of yeah. them. And you I, did. I, I, and yeah, exactly. You yeah. That, that's exactly right, Alison. You know, so I actually had hands-on experience of the things that, you know, we were being taught about in theory, if you like, uh, mm. uh, basically. So, it, and I'm very much, you know, a, a pictures person and that, you know, and diagrams and, and all the rest of it. So that, that helped me a lot. Um, so, so there I am, I'm, you know, I'm past, I'm now what they call a weapons engineer officer. I, I control all of the missiles 
and the sonar and the radar and the communications in a warship, right? And I'm saying, so I'm going around the world on a warship and I'm running all this stuff and I absolutely love it, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, but, the, but the problem was uh, that they started to like map out my future career, right? Um, and it was at the time when they were basically cutting the number of jobs that were in the Navy um, at a senior level, right? And so they'd go, well, you've got to do 18 months there, Chris, and 18 months there if you want to get here. And I'm going, do you know what? Actually, I'm not interested in that. Um, so, and this, I'm sorry, this, this is just a bit like me. So I just resigned, right? So after, after doing all of that for nine years, I just resigned and I, and I left and I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, but I went back to, to Birmingham to work for my dad for a while. And then I got a job and I started, just to keep this short, I started a series of jobs in information technology, right? That I was basically a sales engineer and, and a salesperson, if you like. Um, and then I started my own company um, in the sort of like early 90s. Um, I started with two friends for £6,000 and we sold out the company for £75 million. Um, and uh, so... Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I basically, I basically retired then. Yeah. Um, except, except that I got bored of, of that pretty quickly. And that, so I then started basically um, investing in other companies, helping other companies, and also... Uh, doing what I'm doing now, really helping, you know, young people and that, to, you know, to understand all of, you know, the options and that, that you can, you can take and that and the opportunities that are there mm -hmm. in your careers. So hopefully that's about a bit quick overview, <laughs> not so quick overview. <laughs> well, you, you've had, you see, you've had a lot of different experiences, so it, it makes it hard to to break it down into something very, very short. Chloe, what about you? Okay, so my journey so far is a lot shorter. Um, I only started my career journey three years ago. Um, so when I was at school, it was always expected of me that I'd go to sixth form and go to university. And so I just kind of went with the flow and thought, yeah, that's what everyone's doing. That's what's expected of me, I'll do that. Um, so at sixth form, I completed my first year um, and I started, we had to start thinking about university and I started thinking, I really don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't really want to go to university um, and spend loads of money on a course when I'm not, I haven't got my heart set on that course. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at apprenticeships um, and then I came across a level four apprenticeship with the civil service. Um, Initially, I looked at it because level four is higher than A levels anyway, so that interested me because at the time I was looking, um, it was very rare to come across high level apprenticeships. Um, and as I started looking, I realised that the civil service obviously supports the government and it's a massive area. Um, and I realised that there was endless opportunities for a long term career because I was a bit worried that I'd do an apprenticeship, do the two years or whatever, and then I wouldn't have a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Whilst I was at sixth form, I was working at Tesco and I used to really enjoy the customer service and helping people um, and obviously working with the civil service, I knew that I'd have a chance to make a difference to the public's lives. So I applied for that. That was a long journey. It took 12 months from applying to start in my apprenticeship, in which I had to go to an assessment centre and it was a long process. Um, and at the assessment centre, this helped me, as I said, because I'm still not sure what I want to do for a career now. You was assessed on your skills and you was then matched to a job role that was appropriate for your skills. Um, so my first job doing my apprenticeship was in a job centre for Department for Work and Pensions, which I really enjoyed because it was still customer facing, um, which obviously, as I said, I enjoyed that at Tesco. Um, I really like the civil service because what I like is I have five days a year to do volunteering or development days. So I spent a lot of my time being an apprenticeship ambassador because I'm really passionate about people knowing that an apprenticeship is actually just as good as an option as university. Um, so 
from doing that, I got invited to afternoon tea at the House of Commons, which was quite good. <laughs> um, and when my apprenticeship came to an end, I was made aware of the Fast Stream, which is an accelerated leadership programme to progress you over three years to become a senior leader in the civil service. Now, usually that's for university graduates, but because I'm a civil servant, I was actually able to apply and I managed to gain a, a space on that programme, which has been really good because I didn't go to university and get into debt for something which I wasn't sure I wanted to do. And I've got lo loads of on-the-job experience. And actually, I'm now in the same position as a lot of graduates. Um, so over three years, I'll do three 12-month placements in various government departments, um, which again is going to help me to realise what I actually want to do long term, because I'll get that experience. Um, and again, as part of this, I was given a buddy to help me develop and support me. And she's actually working at number 10. So I got to go there and visit there, which is really good. Um, so yeah, I'm only in the first year of my journey at the moment on the fast stream. But I just think to me, it's really important that do what's best for you. Um, and as I said, I didn't go to university, but actually through an apprenticeship, I'm in the same position now. Mm. Lots of, um, okay it, it's really interesting I mean you both have taken what would be considered alternative paths but yeah. at the same time you both found organizations that have really supported you to get further and also you found people that are willing to well believe in you and are willing to try and push you forward and do better so that's as someone who's involved in helping young people find career advice, I love hearing stories like that because I think it's so important that there, for young people to know that there are companies and people out there that will help them on their journey. They do not have to have all the answers when they're 15, 16, 17, sitting in school. So thank you for both of that. Uh, we do have some questions that have come through, um, so we'll just dive right into them, if that's okay. So firstly, Chloe, you mentioned about the apprenticeship. How did you get into that? And also, how did you find out specifically about the civil service one? Like, where did you go to find the information about that? Um, I was just looking on the government finding apprenticeship service. Okay. Um, and it, it just came up on there. You had to have, um, I can't remember the exact number, but so many GCSEs. But what was interesting was that although it was level four, and A-levels are level three. You didn't have to have A-levels for it, so you kind of jump a step. Um, but there is a website for it. They're actually called Fast Track Apprenticeships okay. within the civil service. Um, so if you type that in there, I've got like their own page for that. But yeah, otherwise just on the normal government finding apprenticeship website. Okay, excellent. And Chris, how would a young person get a job in cyber security? Huh. Yes. <laughs> well, um, yeah, how would you get a job? I mean, it's sort of interesting, actually. Uh, but, so first of all, to say that there are lots of jobs. There's a massive de demand for people that are in cybersecurity and what we call ethical hacking these days, right? And uh, some, somebody asked what ethical hacking was before. Um, so ethical hacking is basically... Um, you ha the, the idea that you have to be a thief to catch a thief, right? So you have to, you have to basically understand how the cybersecurity, how the, the, the hackers, if you like, are working. Once you understand that, then you can stop them, right? Um, and so, there, you know, so there are, at, at the minute, there, there is a huge, huge demand uh, for cybersecurity people. And it is difficult to know where to start. I mean, obviously, if you go the traditional route, Alison, in, and you mm. probably know it better than me, you know, what, what that is at the minute, but, you know, it's, it, it'll be, you know, uh, I don't know, do two, three A-levels, if you like, go to university and do a three or four year uh, degree, course, cybersecurity yeah. and ethical hacking, yeah, right, and somebody, that, that would be like the traditional route, if you like, but, um, you know, thinking about what Chloe has done, if you like, and um, indeed my own daughter, um, who is a bit older than Chloe, but, you know, decided, you know, she obviously she's listening to all the stuff I'm doing with cybersecurity and that, and she got a bit uh, curious about it. 
So she found actually online, um, you know, a bit like Chloe had found online, she found an open university course uh, that was um, actually sponsored or, um, what's the word, officiated, is it, uh, by GCHQ and the National Cyber Security Centre, right? Okay. So it's a bit similar to what Chloe's done, really, in that, in that um, you know, she, she doesn't need to have a degree, but if she gets this qualification, it means that she has the GCHQ National Cyber Security Centre like stamp of approval on okay. her, you know, which is re really cool. And it was really low cost than that. So she's done that. And, you know, she's now just like, she's now uh, trying to decide where to go next. Um, and, you know, I think the thing that to come out, which Chloe is basically saying, you know, we are so lucky in the UK, hopefully people think so, you know, that there are so many different options for yeah. educating yourself you know and really for, yeah and it doesn't have to necessarily even just be school university or college and then job it's lifelong it really really is okay well of course apprenticeships as well as as, yeah. as chloe is saying you know yeah. there are there are cyber security if you like apprenticeships as well yeah yeah Okay, so we, we don't have much time left, so I'm going to try and get you to answer these questions very quickly, just so as we can get through them. So what do you like, sorry, what do you love most about your job and what part of your role do you dislike? Okay, I'll go with Chloe first, because she's I only got one job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I, um, so I think in my job, I love the um, flexibility and the development options. So we can work flexible hours and we can, you, we're supported to do any development opportunities we want, um, which can be various things. And in terms of dislike, if I'm honest, because I'm only in each role for 12 months, it's so exciting and interesting. Uh, there's not actually anything I've had a chance to dislike at the moment, which is very lucky. I'm sure yep. there will be at some point, but yeah, at the moment, um, I'm just really enjoying the variety. That's, that's lovely dear. What about you, Chris? What do you love and what do you dislike? Uh, well, okay. So obviously, uh, you know, I, ha I have, you know, many different hats, if you like. I, I basically love what I do and hopefully that comes across, right? So I, I've really have enjoyed, I've not been in cybersecurity um, space really until the last three years or so. Um, but I have loved my whole career in information technology uh, absolutely loved it you know um, I live and breathe it in fact my daughter did me a t-shirt for my birthday yesterday which basically can't remember eat sleep cyber security repeat <laughs> she put <laughs> on it <laughs> you know which so you know when I get into something I get into it you know okay. and uh, <laughs> and, um, and actually you know uh, you know that I think you know the things that I hate in business is I hate people that play politics you know i hate people that um, discriminate you know for, in any way whether it be age or sex or color or anything like that i can't stand any of that type of stuff you know in fact if i'm working with a company and they display that i'll just walk away from it because <laughs> i can do that <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay and then the last question and again, I'm going to ask you to answer very quickly, although I'm really not sure if you'll be able to, but we'll see. <laughs> um, what are the jobs of tomorrow and how can I get a suitable work experience now to prepare me for the future? Okay. Do you want to go, Chloe? Go, go first. What was the first bit, sorry, about jobs? What are the jobs of tomorrow? What do you think the jobs of tomorrow are? Um. I'm not Don't answer sure. that one then, just do what, what, what about suitable work experience to prepare you for the future? What would you recommend? Um, in terms of work experience, I think if there's any companies that you have a kind of interest in, just write to them, email them, ring them and just ask to do a bit of work experience. Even if you just did a couple of days and then went to a few different companies. Um, as because I used to work in a job centre, I used to arrange a lot of work experience for people, um, and it really is a lot of companies. It's as simple as just contacting them, and they're almost always willing to support you with that. Excellent. Okay, and that's very good advice. Yeah. What about yourself, Chris? 
Well, I think it's interesting, actually, that both Chloe and I um, have been in retail, right? So that I started in retail in the spa and Chloe's been in Tesco's and that. And I think that is great training. And, you know, retail organisations are brilliant. You know, the Lidl's and, the, and all of those, if you like, you know, very innovative. But I think the, the other thing, something that came up the other day, just to say to people as well, is like in cybersecurity and ethical hacking, people think, oh, well, I have to have cybersecurity degree to work for a cybersecurity company. No, they, they, those companies need like a lot of soft skills people as well. So they need marketing and communications people. They need financial people. They need, you know, cybersecurity companies need all sorts of people, not just people with cybersecurity degrees. I agree with that. I know we're running out of time, but with Tesco, I think it was a perfect starting point for me because it gave me my confidence and my speaking to people skills. And I agree, it was such a good starting point for my career. Good. I'm going to agree with you both as someone who worked in Boots for many, many years. <laughs> yeah, they had a very structured program that you had to learn through. So, exactly. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's, well, that's that, Boots. Yeah, Boots the Spa and Tesco's all got a shout out. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, thank you. We've, we've just gone slightly over time. So, at that point, I'd just love to thank you both very much for taking part. That was excellent. Like I said, this will be put on our platform and um, shared with the school and it'll be on our YouTube channel. So thank you very much for taking part. If anybody is listening would like to sign up for another careers session, we will be having one on Monday. So please join us then. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Okay, thanks. Nice to meet you, Chloe. All the best. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye.